My name is Ula Hibna and I work at the Institute of Molecular Genetics in Montpellier in France. The editors of the Journal of Hepatology asked me to comment on our article that is to appear in the November issue of the journal. This work, entitled Hepatitis C viral protein NS5A, induces EMT and participates in oncogenic transformation of primary hepatocyte precursors, was done mainly by Leila Akari, a graduate student, and Damien Gregoire, a postdoc in our lab. It is estimated that about 2.5% of the human world population is infected by the hepatitis C virus and is thus at risk for severe liver pathology, including cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. The pathological effects of the virus are mediated both by alterations of the liver microenvironment, due mainly to inflammation, and by direct effects of viral proteins on the host cell, the hepatocyte. It is one of these direct effects that we have studied. We showed that the viral protein, non-structural protein 5A, or NS5A, profoundly modifies the polarity of the and function of hepatocytes, leading, in the most extreme cases, to transdifferentiation of these epithelial cells into their mesenchymal counterparts. In this process, called EMT for epithelial to mesenchymal transition, cells elongate, separate from the neighbors, change their mode of migration, and acquire the capacity to invade stroma and surrounding tissue. One way of visualizing cell motility is through time-lapse video microscopy of an assay called wound healing. In this experiment, we introduce a breach in a confluent layer of cells in culture. The cells will migrate to fill it, either as a continuous sheet, seen here for control cells, devoid of viral proteins, or else through a mixed behavior of collective cell movement and individual motility of detached cells, which have acquired a mesenchymal phenotype, seen here for cells expressing NS5A. EMT is essential in development, but is also associated with metastatic cancer. More recently, alterations of epithelial polarity have been suggested to also participate in tumor initiation. We have shown that NS5A activates transcription of TWIST2, a transcription factor which is a known regulator of EMT, and that TWIST is essential for NS5A-induced EMT. The cells expressing the viral protein, either alone or in the context of the full complement of HCV proteins, change the biochemical and morphological characteristics. They move faster than control cells and invade gels composed of extracellular matrix components. Interestingly, NS5A cooperates with other inducers of EMT, both external, such as TGF-beta, or intrinsic, such as oncogenic signaling, in triggering EMT. After having characterized cellular behavior ex vivo, we turn to an in vivo model to show that NS5A strongly potentiates the oncogenic activity of RAS, both in terms of tumor growth and in respect to the metastatic activity of the transformed cells. While the expression of oncogenic RAS gives rise to small, subcontinuous tumors, large tumor masses are produced by cells simultaneously expressing RASV12 and NS5A. Likewise, few small tumors are seen in lungs of animals injected with cells expressing only RASV12, while the co-expression gives rise to strong colonization of the lungs by the tumor cells. Overall, our data suggest that NS5A favors formation of pre-neoplastic lesions by disrupting cell polarity, and that additional oncogenic events cooperate with the viral protein to give rise to motile and invasive tumor cells. The, the editors asked me to address two questions. First, they asked me to speculate whether NS5A alone can modify RAS activity. We have not addressed this issue directly, and therefore cannot exclude that NS5A does indeed activate RAS signaling. However, our data clearly show that NS5A acts in synergy with activated RAS. Importantly, we use the non-cogenic form of RAS, which gives rise to a strong constitutive signaling through this pathway. Moreover, NS5A alone does not give rise to tumors in our experimental models, making it unlikely that it activates RAS to a significant extent. Therefore, while we cannot say that NS5A has no impact on RAS, we conclude that it is highly unlikely that it acts solely through modulating RAS activity. The second question concerns the fact that there is no evidence that EMT correlates with cancer risk in HCV patients. This is a key issue, and it, mm, there are several aspects that may discussion. First of all, EMT is notoriously difficult to see in vivo, and most people argue that it is likely to be transient with mesenchymal cells engaging in a symmetrical process of mesenchymal to epithelial transition. Maybe even more importantly, EMT is a complex process involving multiple alterations of the cell's biochemistry, morphology, and function. It is not an all or nothing phenomenon, and it is legitimate to talk of partial or incomplete EMT, which, 
although physiologically important, would be extraordinarily difficult to unambiguously identify in vivo. Our data indicate that apart from very extreme experimental conditions, NS5A does not lead to full-blown EMT, but rather it fragilizes hepatocyte polarity, making the cells highly sensitive to additional EMT inducers, both external, such as cytokine signaling, or intrinsic, such as activation of oncogenic pathways. It will be a real challenge to directly visualize these events in vivo. Finally, but importantly, there is no doubt that livers of chronic hepatitis C patients contain multiple lesions composed of hepatocytes with altered morphology, which, if any, originate from NS5A-induced changes of epithelial polarity is an open question. Thank you.